this is your host Sapin Bhatia and we are here at KubeCon in Seattle and today we have with us James Strickland from Cloudbee. Yes. You are you know, a ex uh, distinguished engineer, yes. which you think is a nice word for... Just means I'm old and have uh, great uh, hair, basically, yes. Yeah. So first of all, you know, thanks for coming to the show, it's really nice My to pleasure. have you here. And I think today we are going to talk about Jenkins X, right? It's X. X, yes. right? X. Like yes. X-Man X. X, X. Extra. So yes. you have X. all the powers of X. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Special powers. So what is Jenkins X? So Jenkins X, um, Kubernetes has kind of changed everything, right? Before Kubernetes, we had a whole plethora of different platform as a service offerings, different cloud providers with different APIs. There was, you know, OpenStack, there was EC2. Um, with Kubernetes coming along, we now have a single standard way of packaging applications as Docker images and running them on any cloud infrastructure, any public cloud, any hybrid cloud, on-premise. So what we've done with Jenkins X is we've really tried to automate CI and CD for Kubernetes. Uh, normally, people do the CD part themselves, right? People figure out how to make tables and copy uh, apps around. What, what we've been able to do because Kubernetes defines a canonical standard way of packaging and distributing and deploying applications, we basically automated CI and CD for uh, Kubernetes applications. So we can basically take your source code and uh, automatically release it whenever you make a change, uh, create Docker images, create Helm charts, and then we promote your uh, application through your environment from uh, development, testing, staging, production. So we automate the releasing, we automate the CI, the testing, uh, we automate the promotion through GitOps. Um, and another thing we do, which uh, it is really cool, every time you create a pull request to propose a code change, we generate a dynamic namespace in Kubernetes and deploy a preview environment. So every code change is deployed to a separate namespace. Then on the pull request, we generate a comment that says, hey, the application is now running at this URL. So anyone in your team can then see the code change come in, can review the effect of the code running live in Kubernetes, right? So we're really trying to focus on how do we help developers go faster, right? By, by doing lots and lots of automation and lots of tooling to help developers use the cloud well and go faster. When, when I talk to a lot of people and, uh, and CICD, as you rightly said, you know, yeah. mostly they do it do it yourself. You know, they pull yeah. it out of Everything things. Everything DIY. And, and, yeah. yeah. But what is interesting that is happening is a lot of those players are also kind of embarking on their cloud native journey. Yes. So they're also willing to shed a yeah. lot of weight that they had. Yeah. So how does that you know change the equation for them? Yeah, I think as soon as people move from like traditional deploying, I don't know, enterprise Java apps in a bunch of VMs or something on premise to, to the cloud you kind of have to almost start from scratch because everything's different, right? You're building Docker containers, that's different. You're building Helm charts, that's different. Uh, you're using Kubernetes to deploy everything and do running upgrades. You might be looking at doing canarying with Istio. You might be doing shadow traffic from production uh, on pull requests and so forth. So I think it's a really good time. I mean, it's an awesome time to be in IT right now because everything's changed. So one of the main reasons uh, we're so passionate about Jenkins X and its automation is uh, as you move to Kubernetes and you move to the cloud native world, you probably need to get rid of your old pipelines, quite frankly, because everything's changed now. So Jenkins X gives you a nice quick way of just moving your applications to Kubernetes quickly, adopting uh, you know, GitOps best practices of using immutable infrastructure, uh, using GitOps to manage rolling upgrades and so forth. So uh, I think it's a great, it's an awesome time to be a developer right now. It's super exciting. KubeCon's an amazing conference. I mean, there's so much excitement in the air. Um, but really, everything's kind of changed, right? Everything's changed in the last five years. So um, Jenkins X is really there to try help you move with the times and use the cloud well, right? Right. And, and when you when you deal with the customers who are planning to, you know, move to that journey, yeah. Uh, what 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 are the big problems that they face, you know, when it comes to yeah. CI/CD pipeline, which you are kind trying to help them? I think one of the biggest challenges is really there's a lot for developers to take on right now. Like understanding what Kubernetes is, why it's good, why you should use it, understanding how to use Kubernetes, figuring out what a Helm chart is, figuring out what a deployment is and a service and a pod and all those kind of things, figuring out how to do secrets and config management and stuff. There's, there's quite a, a steep learning curve uh, uh, to use the cloud well and use Kubernetes effectively. In many ways, what we're trying to do with, with Jenkins X is kind of hide the Kubernetes, so you don't really need to know much about it. Um, but we're not wrapping it, so we're not uh, putting a facade on top of it. So you can, if you're a Java programmer, you can literally just take your Java app, 
run it on Kubernetes and you don't really need to know how it works. You don't need to know what Docker is. You don't need to know what the Docker file is. You don't need to know what the Jenkins file is, right? We automate it all. But as and when you're ready to learn more about Kubernetes, uh, you can kind of peel back the curtain and see the pods in Kubernetes, see the namespaces. You can slowly learn more and more about the Kubernetes thing. So we're trying to kind of get you going quickly on Kubernetes and then uh, slowly over time, let you learn more and more of the power of Kubernetes and the, the abstractions and so forth. Um, so yes, I, I think we're doing our best to make Kubernetes really, really easy for developers to start using it and then over time learn more and more about the details of Kubernetes. Right? One thing with Kubernetes is that uh, it's not very easy. Uh, it's it's a very it's a all, Kubernetes is awesome, too many knobs but it's and very too, deep. There's yes. a lot in the box, right? There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of uh, they're called resources. So there's things like deployments and pods and replica sets and horizontal pod autoscale. I mean, there's there's a huge amount of detail in there. I think in many ways Kubernetes is is conceptually simple, right? It runs your programs on a bunch of nodes. And if any of those nodes die, it spins up more processes. So it's conceptually really easy uh, and really simple, but the detail is slightly overwhelming, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people look at Kubernetes and kind of uh, uh, get a little bit scared because there is quite a lot of detail there. I remember once doing a talk on Kubernetes, and I literally talked for an hour mm -hmm. explaining Kubernetes. And then right at the end, after I talked about it for 20 minutes, somebody says, how do you do log balancing in Kubernetes? And it was like, <laughs> I kind of, I thought I explained that, but it, <laughs> it, it, it's one of those things that Kubernetes deals with, load balancing, auto-scaling, liveness checks. Are, are your processes alive or not? Killing things that are dead and restarting things automatically. So there's conceptually a huge amount of depth and power in Kubernetes. So it, it has to be complicated because it's doing complicated stuff, like auto-scaling processes across a bunch of nodes. I mean, that's that's powerful stuff, right? It, it's So it, it is, it's as simple as it could possibly be, but. It, it is quite deep, but right. it's awesome. I mean, I think one of the things that's good about Kubernetes is uh, it's not changed very much in the last kind of four years, right? So it's not like they're going to rewrite everything from scratch in a totally different way. So I think learning Kubernetes is going to stand you in good stead for a very long time. I think over time with, with things like serverless and Lambda, more and more of Kubernetes is going to be kind of hidden from you. So mm -hmm. you don't need to know about the details, but I think Learning more about Kubernetes is a, is a great uh, thing for developers to do. I think it will really send you in good stead to make you a better developer, mm -hmm. um, more of a full stack developer, and more ca capable of, you know, building cloud native applications. Well, so how does uh, how do you kind of you know make? I mean, of course you don't deal, you, know, you don't offer a Kubernetes distribution, but you know yeah. how do you make it easier? You did say you know that you kind of hide it, yeah. so that you know you, they're not exposed to all those things, and they can. Yeah. So we, we're basically trying to automate as much as we can to help you start using Kubernetes, help mm -hmm. you develop on Kubernetes, debug, mm -hmm. uh, uh, submit pull requests and do releases and so forth. Just to get started with Jenkins X, you need, you need a Kubernetes cluster, right? And we have a little binary called JX for, Jen for Jenkins X. Um, and there's a command JX create cluster. Uh, and if you type, let's say, GKE, mm -hmm. JX create cluster GKE, it will spin up a new cluster on Google Cloud using the uh, G Cloud command line tool from Google. Mm -hmm. It will install Jenkins X on it, and then mm -hmm. after typing that one command, you're ready to go. So we've kind of automated all the common things you will need to do, whether that's installing Jenkins X on an existing Kubernetes cluster, whether that's spinning up a brand new Kubernetes cluster on Amazon, Google, Microsoft, DigitalOcean, IBM, Oracle, PKS from Pivotal, like whatever clouds you're using, Jenkins X works there. Um, and we've automated being able to spin up Jenkins X itself and set up your environments and your teams and your Jenkins and your Nexus and all of the bits of software you need to do CI and CD. Um, but also when you're developing, we want to automate spinning up a brand new microservice. We have a single command line that spins up a brand new microservice, whether it's Go or Java or Node or whatever it is, or importing a brand new project, right? That's one simple command. So we're, we're really automating all of the main things you're ever going to need to do in the CI and CD. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that's interesting, though, is once you've imported your project, from a developer's perspective, you're just sat in your IDE working with Git and your source code, right? You don't really need to know or worry too much about the Kubernetes thing. And the Kubernetes thing just kind of happens in the background. It's kind of like an implementation detail. You write some code, it gets deployed to Kubernetes, and you get to look at it and see the output. So. Developers don't need to focus too much on the Kubernetes side of things. They focus more on the application code right. and using Git and doing pull requests and whatever. Um, 
One thing that is a little different, um, and this is becoming increasingly a challenge, so um, a lot of the talks at Kubernetes this year are about Istio and Service Mesh. Service Mesh is, is the, new, the new hotness in the Kubernetes ecosystem. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges of Service Mesh is, well, so Service Mesh is awesome, but as we start to use more and more Service Mesh techniques, you know, uh, mutual TLS between all your services for better security, uh, uh, chaos testing, automatic load balancing and retries, uh, circuit breakers, all of this awesome stuff that uh, Service Meshes do, it means it's getting harder and harder and harder to run apps on your laptop as if they're in Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. um, and so increasingly, it's becoming a leaky abstraction pretending your laptop is the same as Kubernetes. So uh, one of the things that we've been trying to do on the Jenkins X uh, project is try and make the Kubernetes, try and encourage developers to always run their code in Kubernetes all the time. Mm. So don't run it on your laptop and then submit a pull request. While you're editing the code, compile it, run it in Kubernetes all the time. So we have a, a little thing called dev pods, mm -hmm. for developer pods, mm -hmm. which basically spin up a single container with all of the software tools you need, you know, Maven, Node, Go, kubectl, Helm, Git, whatever the tools are you need to develop, and just run it in Kubernetes. So uh, I, I think one of the lessons we found with trying to go fast with Kubernetes is use it all the time. Like We should always be in the as near to production-like environment as we can all the time. There's literally no point running an app on a Windows machine if you're deploying to a Linux container in Kubernetes, right? So try and keep in Kubernetes all the time. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much you know, for talking My to pleasure. us today. And as thank you said, you know, we should you know, keep in touch and we'll see you here in the future as well. Thank yes, you. Thank you very much.